Keeping things in focus when making videos can be difficult. Sometimes after a long day of shooting, we're super excited to get home and check out all our footage, maybe throw on a color grade, add some transitions. We import all our clips and a whole bunch of our footage is out of focus. So it's already been a couple of weeks since I uploaded that behind the scenes video of the epic cooking b-roll sequence, and the one question that I'm still getting a ton to this day is how do I keep things in focus, especially considering I shot the video handheld and the entire sequence was shot using manual focus. But let's start with that. Why would I choose to use manual focus instead of taking advantage of autofocus even though on a lot of new cameras like my Sony a7 III, the autofocus is pretty damn good. Now the key thing to understand here is that before each shot, I know exactly what is going to happen. I know what movement my actor or subject is going to make, I know exactly what I'm going to do with the camera, and that way I don't need to rely on autofocus to track and keep the subject in focus for me. In fact, a lot of the time when you do rely on autofocus, it can end up making your footage look quite amateur because the camera will be doing things that are unintentional, whether that be breathing or hunting, searching for the subject to track and keep in focus. So that should answer the question why I use manual focus, but now let's get a little bit more into the logistical things behind how I actually keep things in focus. Now we're gonna use the mango shot here as our example because there's quite a few things going on. You can see that our camera movement is going from right to left, but also from front to back. So we're moving on a couple of different axes. For the whole sequence, I used the Sony a7 III with my Zeiss Battis 40 mm F2. Now, despite this being an F2 lens, I actually shot that mango clip at f3.5. So essentially we are sacrificing how much light can get into our lens by almost two full stops, that way our depth of field isn't quite as shallow, and we can get more of our subject in focus. But that's not to say that f3.5 isn't shallow, because 3.5 will actually still give us that nice blurry background, the depth of field just won't be as razor thin as it would be if we were shooting wide open at f2. Now when I'm actually getting my shot and I'm filming filming my subject and I'm doing my camera movement, I am not pulling focus during the shot at all. When I'm actually recording my shot, I'm only worrying about three things. That's the smoothness and steadiness of my handheld movements, my framing, and my timing. So what I'll do is I'll set focus before every single take based on the point in the clip where I want to draw the most attention to a subject, and I call this the payoff. And what this does is create a bit of tension throughout our shot because it might not be perfectly in focus, but then our eyes are satisfied once the subject does come into focus and it's perfectly sharp. So I've had a lot of people ask me what my focus peaking settings are, and I actually don't use focus peaking at all. I'm really not a fan of focus peaking because I find it's not reliable, at least for me. In the past when I've used focus peaking, it just didn't really work out for me. I always ended up with shots that were out of focus, which obviously defeats the purpose. But I mean, if focus peaking works for you, definitely use it. Now here's a little trick I have for when I'm initially setting focus for a shot. On my camera, I've actually set a custom function button that will punch in on my frame so I can really make sure that I've got my focus locked where I want it. One click of the button brings up this orange box to show us what it's going to zoom in on, and then one more click will actually punch into that orange box. And then I simply just turn the focus ring on my lens until I've got the details I want perfectly in focus. Now I understand that for those of you who are used to using autofocus, this method might seem a bit tedious and lengthy, but believe me, if you practice it and get used to it, it's actually very very quick and effective, but most importantly, it's reliable. Now the last thing I'll leave you guys with today is a little hack or cheat code which has really helped me for maintaining focus in sequences like this. I am of course talking about shooting in a high frame rate and speed ramping in post. This gives me the ability to speed up the parts of the footage that are out of focus and then slow down the parts of the footage that are in focus. Now you could technically argue that this is kind of cheating, but it does bring emphasis to the part of the clip where the subject is in focus. But that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.